First, the Palax outer screen, a cloth screen with a palm tree symbol, fell away. Then the silk screen inside also started moving. A gold-colored hand was also seen, similar to what Valavarayan had seen the previous time. Vandiyathevan thought that it was no longer appropriate for him to be on the horse and jumped down in an instant. He ran to Sivkai and looked up saying, Prince! Prince! People carrying teeth! He stared again, he closed and opened his eyes and looked further, the eyes are shining. The tongue that spoke was broken. His throat suddenly felt dry. No, no. You. Palyavar Ilavarasi. Palavar Iravalasi. Your men's horse has knocked down my palanquin. He shouted. All this happened in the blink of an eye. The Vale soldiers who had preceded and followed the Palak came running and surrounded Valavaria. Valavarian also knew that they surrounded themselves like that. His hand naturally went to the freezer. But he could not tear his eyes away from Mohanangi's moon image shining amidst the silk curtain of the Paul Aquin. Yes, contrary to what Valavaryan expected, what he saw in Appalachian now was the shape of a real woman. A woman though, what a woman! Vandiyathevan never thought that such a woman could exist in this world who could drive people crazy. Fortunately, at the same moment, one of Vandiyadeva's brain nerves twitched. A wonderful thought arose in his mind. He decided to use it. With a mighty effort, he cleared his throat and summoned the power to speak, I must forgive you. You are the Isla Irani of Pavur. I have come all this way to see you. He said. A jewel tickled the milk-drenched face of Pavur Isla Irani. The lotus bud that had been piled up by the wind opened slightly, slightly revealing the row of white pearls embedded inside. The glow of that grin made our young hero gag. The soldiers standing near him seemed to be waiting for their mistress's command. The lady gave a signal with her hand, and they immediately separated and stood at a distance. Two warriors dashed against the palanquin and held the stalled horse. The lady on the palanquin looked at Vandiyathevan. Vandiyadeva's chest had two sharp shafts. Yes. I am the youngest queen of Pavur. Said the woman. What could be mixed with such an intoxicating substance in her voice? Why should our head be crushed after hearing this voice? What did you say a little while ago? Did you complain about something? About the people carrying the siva? Can the softness of gossip, the intoxication of lies, the sweetness of wild honey and the brilliance of car air lightning be mixed in a woman's voice? You said they brought the palanquin and hit your horse. The playful smile that crept across the coral petals of the Palvur queen showed that she thoroughly enjoyed the fun. This made Vandiyadeva a little braver. Yes, queen. That's what they did. My horse is scared. He said. You two are scared. Go to the Durga Yaman temple priest and ask him to beat the Neem. Let the fear come out. By this time the fear of Vandiyadeva was well revealed, he even laughed. The countenance of the Queen of Palvur now changed, the moon of cuteness turned into a stone of anger. Never mind, tell the truth. Why did you bring the horse on the palanquin and stop it? A suitable response should be given to this. If not? Fortunately, the answer had already dawned on Vandiyadeva. In a slightly hushed voice, deliberately hushed so that no one else could hear, he said, Devi. Nandini Devi. All were KDR, it is he, Tirumali Apar, he asked me to meet them. That's why I did this ruse, I want to forgive you. He said. Saying this, Vandiyathevan looked closely at the face of the Queen of Palvur. He looked anxiously to see what his reply would do. Connie was like throwing a stone at a tree. Will the fruit fall? Does the fruit fall? Does a thrown stone fall back? Or will some unexpected thunder fall? The Palyavar Queen's black eyebrows went up a little. Surprise and doubt appeared in the eyes. In a second, the woman came to a decision. Well, it is not advisable to stand and talk in the middle of the road, come to our palace tomorrow. Everything can be explained in detail there, she said. Vandiyadeva's heart swelled. 
looks like the thought will succeed. But three quarters of a well is useless, other wells should be crossed. Goddess! Goddess! Won't you let me inside the fort? Won't you let me inside the palace too? What can I do? He said excitedly. The Queen of Pavor immediately opened a silk bag lying beside her on the palanquin and took out an ivory ring from it. If you show this, they will let you into the fort, they will let you into our palace. She gave it saying that. Van Dye the Van eagerly accepted it. For a moment he looked at the ivory ring engraved with the palm leaf. When he stood up again and wanted to salute the queen, the curtains of the palanquin were closing. Aha! The full moon is slightly eclipsed by Rahu. But the screens of this palak have made that talking moonlit afternoon delightful in a second. Don't follow me anymore. It's dangerous, stop and slow down. Said a silky voice from within the tooth screen. Then the tooth moved, the players went back and forth as before. Van Diathevan stood aside by the road holding the horse's head rope. His eyes noticed that the man who approached him and spoke to him turned back two or three times and sent a message to his heart. Yes, his outer mind was roving around the ravishing form of Ronnie Pavuver on the palanquin. Is it true what you have seen and heard all this time? Or a mystical fantasy? Can such a beauty, such a beautiful form, exist on this earth? It is said in the Puranas that there are goddesses like Arambai, Irvazai, and Managai. Their beauty is said to have contributed to the penance of the sages who had completely renounced them. But in this world, all that is being said in the cities of the country that the great destroyer lies at the feet of this Mahini may be true. If so, no wonder. Where is the grizzled old man with a grey veil and a stern look with all his war wounds? Where is this young Manga, Sukumari, and Katazagi? What would the old man not do to get one of her smiles? After standing on the side of the road for a long time absorbed in these thoughts, Vandiyadeva mounted his horse and slowly led it towards Tanjore Fort. At sunset he reached the main fort gate. The town started just a short distance from the fort. Streets of shops selling various goods and streets of people engaged in various industries were lined up around the fort. The streets were full of people going and coming buying goods and asking prices, bullock carts and horse-drawn carts, and everywhere there was the same bustle. Van Diathevan was very eager to enter those streets and see the people living in the new capital of the Chola country and their way of life. But there is no time for all that now. The thing that came must be looked at first, all fun should be saved for later. With this resolution Van Diathevan approached the main gate of Tanjore. The grand gates of the fort were then possible. Guards at the gates were forcing people to stand on the side of the road. People also stood aside. Yes, instead of going about their business, they stood as if they were waiting for some procession or spectacle. Men, women, children, and old people all stood eagerly. A short distance in front of the fort gate was empty. Only the gate guards stood. Van Diathevan was eager to know what was the matter. He didn't want to be the only one to go and knock on the castle gatekeeper while everyone else stood aside. Vain arguments and fights can arise from it. Now the matter is important to him, not the vigor, this is not the time to get into vain fights. So Van Diathevan stood aside on the side of the road where he could observe the fort gate. The smell of flowers was wafting on the side. He looked back, a youth was seen standing with two baskets of flowers in both hands wearing symbols of Lord Shiva like Thirunir Rudraksha etc. Brother! Why is everyone standing aside on the side of the road? Is there going to be a procession? He asked. Aren't you a man from this side, sir? No, I'm from throat country. That's why you ask, you'd better get off your horse and stand down. Vandiyadeva jumped from his horse to make it convenient for him to talk to the youth. Brother! Why did you ask me to get off? He asked. Now the army of servants is about to come from within the fort after seeing the king, that is why so many people are standing aside. Just for fun. Yes. What if I sit on a horse? Let's see, but it's dangerous if the guardsmen see you. What is the danger? Will they take the horse away? 
they will take away the horse, the wicked will take away the men. Will they leave the horse and man alone? What can we do without it? The law in this city is made by the Vilakara Padayar. You don't question them. Even the corrupt people don't interfere in the Vilakara Padayar's affairs. At this moment great cheers of protest were heard inside the fort. The sound of the city, the beating of drums and the sound of horns were mixed with the greetings of hundreds of human voices. Vandiyathevan was well aware of Vilakara warrior forces. It was an important institution in the Palantami country, mainly in the Chola country. A Vila Sharon was like a bodyguard to the kings who ruled from time to time. But there is a difference between them and other ordinary bodyguard. These are the people who vowed to protect the king's life at the cost of our lives. They vowed to cut off their heads with their own hands in front of Durgai if the king's life was in danger due to their carelessness or disobedience. Is it natural that players who take such a strict vow have certain privileges that others don't? Both the gates of the fort opened with a cry of Badar, Badar. First came two horsemen. They were holding a flag flying high on their right. The appearance of the flag was strange. The red flag had a tiger on top and a crown below the tiger. Beneath the crown was an altar, a severed head and a large sacrificial knife. It was a bit scary to see the flag. Behind the flag-bearing horsemen came a large bull carrying two pairs, while two men stood banging on the pairs. Behind Rishavite, about fifty soldiers were marching with small drum, parumbaram, and tampatam. They were followed by fifty more with long and curved horns blowing bam, bam, pay pam. Behind them there were probably a thousand soldiers. Most of them brought the following salutations in thunderous voices. Long live Peyron Chola Earthly Emperor. Long live. Long live the beautiful Chola King. Long live. Long live the Chicken Minister. Long live. Long live. Long live Tanjay Argon. Long live. Hail. Hail Lord, who brought down Vera Pandayan. Hail. Hail. Hail K.O. Rajaksari the land of Madurai, Rai, Elam, and Throat. Hail! Hail! Long live Karakal Valavan Thirukulam Niduzi! Long live! Hail! Durkai Magali Parad Peri Parashukti Win! 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 Victorian Tiger Flag Spread Wide and Win! 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 Victory! Victory! The above chants from hundreds of pained voices mesmerized the listeners. As they came through the gate of the fort, the echoes of those chants joined in. Many of the people standing on the roadside joined in the chanting. Thus, readers may know that Murugan, the deity of Tamil Nadu, has a name Vilakara. Scholars believe that Murugan got his name because he was a deity who vowed to save devotees. There was a great commotion until the soldiers started coming out of the gates of Tanjore Fort, marched down the street, and disappeared into the distance. 